Don't you also hate it if you place your giant wall of diamond blocks in the wrong spot and need to move it? What now? Mine it all and place it again? No! Two-way flying piston wall is the solution for all your problems and will change your life. Hey guys, so today I want to show you my two-way flying piston wall that I made for a block storage. So I'm gonna use this as one component of a larger machine, but I saw that a separate video might be useful in case somebody else needs it for yeah, another use. So what it can do is basically just push up to 12 blocks somewhere else. So I'm using this for a block storage where, for example, a million in this case, Potzol blocks can be stored, so they can be selected later, instead of pushing them into a blast chamber, where if you blow them up, they will just drop dirt. So that's, yeah, one potential use, but who knows what you needed it for. Okay, um, let's launch it. I just need to yeah, quickly extend this. And then on the retraction, it's an important part here that all of the flying machines get activated at the same time, we'll launch the flying machine. It's gonna be quite laggy. So you, <laughs> you're warned here. Okay. Looks a bit chunky, but I think I'm just gonna run this in replay mode as well. So you can see it yeah, a bit more nicely rendered. Okay, so it's already pushing the stuff forward. It's gonna get stopped on the other side here, the obsidian blocks. And then it pulls the whole flying machine back. Okay. So once it's returned, you also need to reset some of the pistons. So in order to make this work this nicely, I had to use like extra sticky piston that push or pull part of the you know, flying machine as well in order, order to not exceed the push limit. So those pistons need to be one block further. You can reset this easily with this line here. Also looks kind of nice. Everything gets reset. Okay, now you could push in the next uh, diamond blocks, uh, potzol blocks or whatever, and then yeah, also push it over there. There's just one small issue, your nice diamond block wall is now all crooked. But there's actually a solution for this that it comes at a tiny cost. I'm gonna show it over here instead of the uh, big boy, because the tiny version is not as laggy. Of course, you can also, in theory, expand this and make it even larger if you want to. Of course, at some point it's gonna be quite laggy. All right, so the solution is actually just to remove those obsidian blocks here that stop parts of the flying machine. But you know, the tiny problem we have then is that some pistons are left behind, but this can also be solved easily. Okay, so let's launch the flying machine here. It pushes forward and in the end, everything is nicely aligned. And yeah, some of the pistons are left behind, but it's actually no problem at all. All I gotta do to fix this is just to launch the flying machine again and those pistons will be grabbed. There we go. Now we got a nice diamond block wall here. Yeah, in the end, we still need to push those pistons back. Um, sticky piston real quick. And then we just yeah, push them forward again. And now it's ready to be launched again. Of course, you can also automate this. The option to create a smooth wall after pushing was actually the whole reason why I made a new two-way flying piston wall. Five years ago, I already made a version that didn't even use any honey blocks. So here's the honeyless version I made about five years ago in 1.12. It's a lot more irregular in front uh, because it has a, a different piston layout. In a way, it's actually also superior to the new version um, because yeah, we need fewer obsidian blocks here on the side to stop the whole flying machine. So some intelligent usage of the push limit. It's enough to actually just stop one module and then the other module is also above the push limit and gets stopped as well. So definitely this still has a use. 
So how come this piston wall be a bit more smoother than the other? Well, we just use a different layout. So the old one was basically two slime blocks and pistons around like this. And then single observer here in the back that powered everything. Just the one here at the bottom had to be updated by other parts of the, the piston wall moving. That's why I got a bit tricky. So now instead we can use the honey block that was added a couple versions ago and yeah, make this shape here. But we're gonna have an issue, the slime block module. So if you count, we already have um, nine, 12, and then we still need two observers to power everything. So we are at push limit 14. Because we also here many pistons and yeah, the next module would then be directly above. So again, one honey. Because I can't really have two honey, because a honey block can't be powered. So I can't use QC this way. Okay, so here I push limit 14. We will try to push this forward. Doesn't work. Um, yeah, since we have push limit 12. Um, so the way to solve this issue was then actually to, in the same tick, push the pistons here on the side. So they're no longer attached to the slime block structure. And then we can also push this. But of course, yeah, we, we also get in some some problems with this um, that had to be solved. And that problem that had to be solved was update order. So if you push the structure here in the back forward, those three sticky pistons need to yeah, extend before this piston that pushes the rest of the slime structure in front forward. In the end, I tried a lot of things like um, using the update order of pushing a slime structure. Then it kind of worked on pushing it forward, when it, but when I tried to pull it back, it no longer worked. But then really in the end, solved the problem was just to use block event delay directly on this module. Um, so I was able to actually just add a couple more pistons like this. So this, is, this piston here is powered by QC diagonally and basically needs an update. So I was able to attach a piston here, there, and here in the back. And now we got this block event delay chain that just made it work in the end. As you can see, I can push this forward. And if I stop this now, I can also pull it back. Okay, let's push it forward again. And then pull it back. Okay. I'm gonna attach this here again and now pull it back. So this was the, the working solution in the end. So a bit of progress has been made when it comes to those two-way flying piston walls, thanks to the honey block. But of course, what I'd really like to have in the end would be a flat one or something like this. But right now, I feel like I'm almost certain this is not possible because no layout exists that would make this work. So. Of course, you could make something like this flying one way, but the problem is also then reusing it and, and flying it back the other way without like assembling it from the side. So it should just be the flying piston wall that does it all. And of course, it also should be infinitely, infinitely expandable. So I could also make this work maybe with a six or eight wide version. Uh, then we can have like observers here on the side or whatever that would help a lot. But right now, if you would try to yeah, make this work, you will always run into the issue basically that a honey block can't be powered. So everything here, the pistons in front, need to be powered through the slime blocks. And if you try to come up with a layout somehow that would make this work, it will always come you know, to, to the problem that you got like uh, slime block structures um, yeah, basically sticking to each other. So. I didn't really find a layout that makes it possible you know, to alternate honey and slime in a way where still everything gets powered and still everything also gets pushed and pulled from the back. So this is probably the thing I'd like to be wrong the most about. Maybe there is a solution, but I'm almost certain there's no way to make this work. So we can only use QC uh, to a limited extent. If you've watched my recent Skyblock episode, it's definitely possible to make a, a piston ceiling that pushes everything down from above, because there we can use quasi-connectivity even more, so that is doable, but I just don't see it happening here with the, the piston wall. And this, by the way, is also one of the things that wouldn't work in Bedrock Edition at all, with no QC. Um, so, that, the two-way flying piston wall is definitely something that right now 
thanks to QC, only works the Java version. All right, so that's all for today. In case you want to move the big diamond wall yourself, you can check out the world download. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.